Okay, we're recording. Right. So, um, hello everybody. Uh, I'm Andrea Giammarchi. I'm going to be the chair for this Ascript community meeting, January 30th. And um, let me check the calendar or the, sorry, the it's agenda. It's 2024 in case you, you were checking that. Oh yeah, 2024. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good, good. Thanks. Um, so we have few attendees and let me check it back who might like to introduce themselves. Anyone would like to introduce themselves or uh, or not? Anyone new? No is a fair answer. So take no as an answer. Um, yeah, so let's uh apparently there are few announcements and actually i wrote uh, i apologize apologize i wrote my um agenda items into announcements so uh, i just fixed that so first announcement nicholas new release yesterday another one coming soon anything else you would like to share about it you basically said it. Uh, new release yesterday. Go check it out. You'll find it on the GitHub page. There are release notes in there. Um, there will be... Uh, I'm, I'm saying this more for Jeff because uh, Jeff does amazing, awesome blog posts about the new releases. Uh, but there will be a new release coming soon where what Fabio is going to talk about and what Andrea is going to talk about will be in. Um, we like to release often and release regularly without fear. Even though it was Friday evening when we could have done it, I thought I'd do it on Monday anyway, because, you know, <laughs> life's too short. Um, so that's it from me. I've just realised that whenever I go to write notes in this meeting, because I'm the note keeper of this meeting, um, the video recorder will actually just see me typing into the document rather than the actual meeting. So I can't be the uh, note taker, otherwise you can't see the meeting. So if anyone else would like to... Uh, just do that, maybe temporarily, uh, or, or something like that. Uh, that would be most appreciated. Anyway, end of announcement. I, I can take notes if you'd like. Thank you very much. All right. All right, Gosh, so steps up. <clears throat> announcement is out. I script. Latest release. Um, there are various fixes, improvements. I think if I can fair a word about the latest release um, because we don't have a, a full blog post from Jeff also blog post yet. Um, it's mostly about the ability to have multiple terminals, Py terminals, when worker attribute is used. Um, there are a few fixes here and there in the PyDad side. I think it's fair to say it was mostly a JS um, focused release to fix some bug and uh, bring some new features. But when Nicolas said as uh, and the next release is coming soon, there are even more awesome things uh, that probably Fabio either today or next time will talk about. Um, but yeah, thanks for that. Uh, following the, the agenda, now we have items. Uh, oh no, put it back. <laughs> don't don't waste your, your writing, please. <laughs> but anyway, so we have Fabio. I, I just put it in the wrong place, so I, I'll put it in the Yeah, yeah, I did the same place. at the beginning, so <laughs> okay. that's totally fine. Um, Fabio, merge uh, 1954 and release. Um, I think this is about MicroPython compatibility. Yeah, and if yeah. Not, um, please correct me. Otherwise, the floor is yours. No, that that is that we are uh, um, adding MicroPython compatibility. I one of the reasons I really would like to merge and release as soon as possible. Well, one, it fixes that. Two, we can do micro uh, smaller releases. Three, uh, next month. I was good to have a separation uh, in the release numbers because uh, next next month I'll be working on UI support and event um, management and things like this uh, when 
you know, if you have an element and you tie to an event handler like resize or things like this, we don't have support right now. I was going to work on that too. All of that are bigger features for PyWeb slash PyDOM. And I think it makes sense to have it in a separate, you know, major number. Um, doesn't it doesn't matter too much, but I think it's just a nice separation. Uh, that PR uh, seems ready. I um, added tests for uh, the test for Michael Python. I added back, well, not back. I added the Python tests running on the browser in the test automation as well. So it should be included now when we run. It wasn't before. In fact, we had a, a couple of tests failing. And that's it. Yeah, Andrea. Thanks. As a half of a joke, it looks like you are complaining about Calvar <laughs> version numbering, uh, revision numbering, and, and something like no, that. So, no, <laughs> I'm, no. I'm, it's not clear that we're Stop doing now. something more. We, we... <laughs> no complaints. No complaints don't, at don't all. Don't <laughs> No, 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 no complaints. You know, it, it, you know what it is. It's the type of thing. The same thing happens when I do a go do guess and ending with the round number, either the 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 liters or or the price is always a, a a nice thing. That's the same thing. You know, it's just personal satisfaction. Okay, as a if I may add a personal note, if if we want to do frequent releases and we are kind of afraid of Calvar release naming convention, maybe we should discuss this further. But uh, right now, I don't want to... Well, uh, honestly, not, it, it's not really a, a afraid of it, really anything. Um, it's just, again... No, afraid, I sorry, it, afraid, uh, I, I meant uh, in, in, in quotes. Like, uh, it doesn't uh -huh. look like a huge step forward, but maybe that's, that's what happens within the month. Yeah. So maybe we should think about it. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, on a, honestly, again, it's I I just think it's a nice separation. Um, this patch should go out. It's it's actually a patch, right? It's not a, a feature or anything. Anyway, anyway, we can we, we we can wait two days, I suppose, and uh, and a, a light a, a tiny fix. Well, the uh, side might. Uh, might I'm yeah. I, I, hang on, hang on. Hang on. I, can I just ask? This is for Fabio. Um, you want me to you want me to press the release button before the end of January or in yeah. February? It's before. Good. I thought that's what I thought you said, before, but what Andrea yeah, just said sure. made me go. No, no, no. Andrea was I think joking, we can't wait for two days. Ah. The same thing <laughs> could we could have said we can't we couldn't wait for ten hours to merge the yeah. end of the day today. Right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> okay. I can't wait to read the notes that Lukash is probably not writing at the moment, which says something like <laughs> three developers argue for 10 minutes about Calva. Uh, anyway. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. It was, I, I did start it. Um, I didn't really mean it. it. It's just funny about numbering and uh, yeah, and naming. Just hard issue in, in programming, right? We all know that. So. Um, unless there are questions around this topic, uh, next two items are from me. Um, the first item is about automating box on release magic button. I know, I know, uh, Nicholas is always uh, volunteering to, to to press that button, and, um, and I'm glad he does. I'm super thankful for that. Um, at the same time, I've noticed that today I was looking for, like, not today, five minutes before this meeting, I was looking for the latest docs um, to copy and paste just the where to find the right PyScript core and core CSS. Um, if I can share, maybe uh, it's easier that, for everyone to understand what I'm talking about. This is my so, fault. I take responsibility for that. Um, no, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. It should be automated to me. So my th th that that's my agenda item. So when I when I went here and then I click examples or documentation and then I ended up here. But is there any way we can actually automate this and so that this is going to be 2024 one point or x point y 
um, anytime we release because that will be awesome. I don't know if it takes time for CDN, so wherever we are hosting this to actually reflect that update. But I think if we have a um, big button to release, probably these details matter. And um, I'm not blaming you, Nicholas. I think this is something that we should, if anyone can help fixing it, we should all try to fix this together and uh, and move forward. But I found it like, uh, okay, I'm going to present the latest, greatest, and then I copy and paste this. Um, and then you can see that my copy and paste didn't produce the, the expected results because um, I have errors. <clears throat> and so I, I get a chance to jump unless there are questions or discussions. Sorry, I'm not seeing you anyone so should we try to automate that part too so update things in docs yeah accordingly I... because docs are in a separate repository so i don't know how much uh, problematic it can be or how much effort but i think it, it's worth it yeah i agree um, so we, we, can release... script, we can script it into the github action and we can just <laughs> do something um uh somebody me probably uh, yeah. we'll, we'll make that happen. Uh, Lukash, you've got your hand up. I'm hoping you'll say, ah, oh, yes, I've already written a script that does this. <laughs> uh, yes and no. So for CPython, we both have and not have what you're saying, which is, um, we don't, uh, really have like a documentation, a release tied to a release of Python. Um, but every time you actually push something to the main branch, uh, it gets put in the dev. Uh, it gets built every few hours, like on the on the documentation side, like for the development version. And for three version, that is like whatever is currently three. So currently it's three twelve. So yeah. whenever there's any PR that gets landed in in the docs directory for C Python, it gets rebuilt right away. Like it. In theory, is scary because you might have for a bunch of time and documentation that is newer than what people are actually using. But in practice, for this entire time I've been a release manager, like nobody ever complains, and this is way easier to like allow for the documentation to kind of live. Uh, yeah. be because you know, kind of the development version is the development version. Everybody knows that like this is kind of. Like it, this is unstable. This is where the new features go. Like for the version that is already maintained, like for us, like there, it's very unlikely that you're gonna be documenting something that is going to be not working for you locally. Yeah. Like you, you might see some security like comment on things that are unavailable to you, right? Yeah. So like I would suggest, you know, can if you might just look into this the thing which is maybe easier than just doing like this point like rebuild at the time where you press the green button maybe actually rebuilding is easier for you uh like in our case we noticed that when we were doing something like that it wasn't entirely automated but it was automation that like the release manager also had a button that you know that did the the kind of the, the doc well the button in, in the terminal right like you yeah. know this kind of uh yeah a co console button for really building docs. metaphor we would <laughs> yeah and we would very often discover that the build is broken yeah uh, and it was broken like weeks ago and nobody noticed. So we, we just switched to this other form of like, we, we're just going to rebuild all the time. So when, when it's broken, we're going to know right away, even yeah. if it's a few weeks before release. Yeah. Yeah. So just a comment, like this is how we, we do it. Yeah. I think that's a good practice. Um, it, it currently the, uh, the docs <laughs> have a bunch of stuff that's automated, but versioning or, or picking up the latest version is not one of them so um that's something to work at i'll i'll take a look at that um hopefully before but, texas <laughs> i agree with everything that has been said but um actually and <laughs> the thing is that the, the the big button we don't press it that often and also now that i'm thinking about it we discussed previously about, uh, okay, we update the, the demo code automatically, but do we have any automation that tests that the demo code is actually running as expected? Because otherwise there's also the follow-up copy paste broken thing that might happen. So yeah, uh, I didn't mean to no, 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 no. 
that, 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 that suppose this issue as something to fix today is just something to think about yeah, yeah, and yeah, maybe yeah. maybe we can do the right thing yeah uh, you mentioned just on that point sorry uh, I, I, I i'm gonna sort of well i'm not, yes i think uh, jeff i'm pointing at jeff uh here um i seem to remember you working on something that will read code on a page and you could press a play button and it would evaluate that if it was PyScript code um that would be a great way of uh testing i guess um in our documentation but that again is another kind of hand wavy something in the future i mean we're dog fooding PyScript by doing that as well uh, which is always a good thing um you know wouldn't it be good if yep. if, if if the code that we're talking about can be run in the browser. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Actually, that's run in the browser, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. The, the trick is always, right, when you're putting a PyScript in your documentation, Fabio and I talked about this a little bit, is like, like if you have, like, Nicholas, like when I'm reading through the documents that you have, you, you have written so much of, it's like, you know, I have a code block of a, import statement, I have a code block of a more of a, you know, import statement, a function, and then it says run this function, like the thing that you actually want to run in its entirety and view the output of is sort of a conglomeration or a bastardization of those yeah. things, which are laid out as an explainer, but not as a block of code. Yeah. So there's, I would think there's probably some way that we would want our, like our testable block to live yeah. like right Flagging. there, but it might yeah. not be literally like putting in a comment, you know, and, yeah. and do like a doc test kind of a thing, yeah. maybe, yeah. Um, but a more fun projects we can dive into exactly it's more fun <laughs> yeah and i think testable doc or testable chunk is uh, something to think about when we wrap inside html anything and uh, we can create magic around it so thanks i think this was uh to me it was very uh, nice conversation thank you all um last but not least for me uh so i Probably should share my screen again. Uh, so we are at this point in time. I wrote a demo about experimental create proxy. I said myself, we probably shouldn't talk about too much about this. At the same time, this is the reason I complained about the previous point. Um, basically, I, I wrote um, this, sorry, too much, probably. Um, I, I tried to run 2024. I copy and pasted this, and uh, and I added my PyConfig, experimental, create proxy, auto. Um, then I've done this uh, simple test, like add event listener, and I want to just pass my lambda one off, not one off, it doesn't matter. So, um, when I try this, uh, of course, I had the error you've seen probably before when I when I when I was sharing my screen already. Um, borrowed proxy was automatically so. This is an error that we thought, how about we drop it or we try to see what are the consequences if we drop it and so i changed the release version and this is i i couldn't think of any extra way to flag this as experimental if not prefixing the create proxy auto as an experimental feature and so now it's all fresh and now i'm gonna just Click the document and it's going to be a clip and that's it. So this is some not documented, probably we should or maybe we shouldn't, but some hidden feature that we decided to uh, land in order to understand what's the deal around this pattern. Um, and for context, we have from Iodide uh, FFI import add event listener that works out of the box if we do something else instead. So we need to, well, in this case, it's easy. We don't need to, to, to query the document. It's just the document itself. Um, click and Lambda event type. If I haven't written any typo, this should actually work the same with or no, I did write some typo. Uh, sorry, 
sorry, this is Python FFI um, web helpers or something. Utils, but maybe? anyway, I don't know. No, it's uh, wrappers. 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 Of course it is. Let's see if wrappers. it's problems. Yay! Oh. So, um, the 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 point of this thing, which can go, and I can refresh and show you, it's going to be the same, it's going to work. Um, the point of this experimental flag is to actually, especially because we have also MicroPython, to actually tell our users, hey, can you just stop doing this and try to not care about it and see if that works out of the box? And at the same time, when when anyone is using um, Python, for instance, also they should never care about any of this. But there are th there is this case where we have like um, JS modules main, and we ooh, and we have a thing. Sorry, we have uh, HTTPS. Blah, blah 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 that is actually the module thing and so when we do um from PyScript yes modules import thing uh, we want the thing library to be able to use this pattern mm -hmm. and this pattern means that the thing should be able to do thing uh do stuff and the do stuff is maybe just this function Sorry, bad habit with the semicolon. Uh, thing do stuff is function. The thing, the discussion around create proxy, should it be automatically or not, is that from a user perspective, especially because we introduced third party modules, we don't know if the thing do stuff is going to use this right away, or is going to need to create a proxy, or is going to need to add an event listener, or is going to need to, and all this kind of if are kind of theoretically resolved with enough magic with this experimental flag. So this is my demo around this topic. Uh, I'm not suggesting everyone should just start using this. I'm just asking politely if you could please test any demo code, maybe not production, surely not production, anything that you think, okay, I'm using this Pyodad FFI or this uh, ID event listener from wrappers and uh, all this kind of stuff. I'm not super happy because the code could be more expressive without thinking about the listeners and the functions and the lambdas I need. Um, if you could possibly try at least once this experimental flag and give us feedback, we will be able to better understand where we are with this experimental feature, what's missing, what's broken, and so on. That's it for me. Okay, do you want to stop sharing? Yeah, I, yeah. I do. Yeah, yeah. Okay, can I also add just a little bit of context here as well? Yes, um, please. So, we have two interpreters, MicroPython and Pyodide. We also have two places in which those interpreters can run on the worker or on the main thread. So in the world of MicroPython, you don't need to create proxy in either the web worker or the main thread, because that's just how MicroPython's FFI works. Um, in the world of Pyodide, if you're on the worker, you don't need to use create proxy either, because behind the scenes, it's being proxied anyway because of the, you know, the inter-process communication going on there. It's being serialized and deserialized. It's only on the main thread with Pyodide where you needed this create proxy thing. And it means that the code that you might want to write one place, you know, it breaks, uh, if you see what I mean. So we're also trying to, in a sense, address a kind of a, an inconsistency uh, in the code. You should be able to make that work on MicroPython anywhere, on Pyodide anywhere, and it just works as well as consistently with, you know, JavaScript libraries and things like that. This is experimental because, man, you should see the emails that we've been <laughs> sending each other about this sort of thing and the technical discussions, deeply technical discussions, because there's stuff about memory management and 
uh, and performance and a whole bunch of stuff. This is why it's flagged as experimental because we just want to see what goes on and what happens, really. Uh, Jeff, I see the floor to you. I can see you have your hand up. Yeah, no, I, you, you touched on the, the subject that I think will be, I, I, I'm really excited for this as a feature, as a, as a usability thing, as a UI to not, for user, for PyScript users not to have to learn about manual proxying would be a huge thing off their plate. And the only, the the only thing, the thing I'm interested to test with, and it's a, a thing that Antonio, I know, dug into very deeply, and I think we'll, we'll do again now that this feature is out under an experimental flag, is are there, are there cases where we are but by basically working around the fact that PyDi wants to do its best to free up unused things when they're not being proxied if we always proxy them are we going to be accumulating memory to a point that we don't need to and i don't know i know and i think antonio's data said that perhaps and it's worthy of investigation um that said that could also be a situation that like no one is actually using PyScript for yet, or that we don't know those people yet. So I'm excited for people to put this in the real world. I think I saw Andrea and then Fabio, maybe in that order. No, it's the other way around. Fabio was first, I think. Ah, fair enough. Fabio. Oh, cool. Um, I'll be quick. I think there are two aspects here. Uh, well, first of all, the the patch, the feature, really awesome work, Andrea, as usual. Uh, I think it's actually another advancement into what Jeff said, like the the platform adding a layer uh, where users don't need to think about those technical details that things just work. So this is great. I think in terms of MicroPython, Pyodi, there are two concerns, really. One is uh, the language itself, compatibility to the language itself, which MicroPython has limitations there. Um, and there are things that we can try and do. Um, and we will always have that issue. And two, in differences in the FFI and actually how objects translate in to, to, uh, into JavaScript and whatnot. And I think on this side, uh, it's important that we add that layer. I agree on the experimental label, but at some point I will keep a flag like this in the sense that uh, you may have users that want to tap into proxies and whatnot, right? So. That's um, that's the, the 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 one thing. Uh, Andrea. Um, yes. So I, I would like to comment two things. So the first one w was on the <clears throat> about the notes, um, specifically the second point, which is kind of accurate and uh, is something that everyone would ask or wonder about. Um, it would be way more convenient if PyScript created long-lived proxy objects automatically. So this is the catch. Those are not necessarily long-lived proxies. The, the, um, the flag basically handles automatically garbage collector from the JavaScript side. Whenever on that side that handler can go, the handler is gone and are automatically freed on the Pyodide side or even MicroPython. So here's the thing, we are adding an event listener to the document in this very specific hello world and uh, <laughs> like uh, demo. Document will never be freed. And all the thing about create proxy is that you have to remember when to free objects, when to not. And um, in this case, the, 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 the flag will automatically automatically attach a handler that is observed from the garbage collector and the garbage collector say, hey, if the document will never be free, this handler will always work unless you remove it. And so, and when you remove it, there's nothing that automatically frees the object in the Pyodide side. So this is a quick, very simple example of something that is very complicated to explain because users when you pass when, when I show the thing do stuff pass a lambda they even if they do create proxy they will never know when the proxy is good to go because it's a third party libraries they have no idea the life cycle of the callback and if the callback is attached to a document as a listener they will never need or have to actually free that when because we are dealing especially with the listeners, um, the, currently the patch is greedy enough to do this 
uh, mapping of what's been what's a proxy, what's not, what's a callback, what's not, all over the place because that that was the easiest way to be sure that the, actually the patch works. But behind the scene, if you create a proxy and you pass that thing to the to the third party library and you have no idea when the proxy can be freed, what's the point of creating a proxy? So it's a bit of mental overhead that you think, oh, it didn't work before, so I just create a proxy. But that's not that's not it. When you create a proxy, you need to know when to free to destroy the proxy. And so this patch idea is to find out how will the code look like when you use third party libraries and you have no idea about any callback lifecycle, when you have add listeners to the DOM and you never need to free the proxy to destroy it because unless you remove that listener, you, you don't have to. You actually, if you do, you, you break the code. So the patch is experimental on purpose. Uh, I agree with Fabio, there might be a flag to say no, yes, no. We, you have to define a, a default, but at the same time, the, the experimental is there to exactly at this point in time to see what's, what, what's working, what breaks, and where it fails easily with uh, previous examples code and the previous code basis. So I just wanted to point out that the flag is magic enough to destroy the proxy whenever it's the right time from the JavaScript garbage collector point of view, which is not necessarily, as you mentioned, Jeff, uh, what Antonio said, is not necessarily the right time for the WebAssembly counterpart, but it's surely the right time on the DOM. And there are a lot of use cases where listeners are added to never failing or never uh, expiring DOM nodes, like the document, the, the, the body or main sections on a, on a whole page. And in that case, all these create proxy dance is just like, okay, you do that. But it's not, should that always be the case or always be necessary? And that's it. Awesome. I think I saw Nicholas, you got your hand up for a while there. Yeah, don't worry. Uh, so mention of MicroPython. Um, uh, this is just a kind of a note um, because I know this would never work with C Python because C Python is huge and there's lots of people. But the advantage of MicroPython is that Damien says it's this way, <laughs> it's, it's that way, uh, and he's fast enough and it's a small enough code base that he can make changes and things. But um, he pointed out to me today that uh, the WebAssembly garbage collector is now on by default yeah. in Chrome. Uh, not hidden behind an experimental flag and things. And he was interested to hear about um, what difference it would make if MicroPython switched to using uh, the WebAssembly GC rather than uh, the one that it has, because then we don't have two worlds, we have just one world, surely, or unless I'm misunderstanding. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I kind of expected a response from Andrea. <laughs> I, I don't know all the details, but uh, I think also Hood mentioned that yeah. if we had a unique garbage collector share between JS and uh, any WebAssembly related interpreter engine, however we, we want to call it, that's the, yeah. the, the, the golden ticket because everything is known across all boundaries. But the WebAssembly GC not necessarily is not necessarily about the V8 or the JavaScript. That's what my query. Yeah. That's why I was asking. I wasn't sure. So we need to still. We need to communicate. Yeah, there point. might still be a gap between the two memory management systems. There might still and, be a gap. Yeah. This is early day to discuss about what's going to be the WebAssembly GC, and everyone is is excited about it, and I'm sure. That will do the right thing there and probably because there was already this ongoing discussion is how eventually we can just hint the the main garbage collector on the javascript world that we would like to have stuff released sooner than later and, and probably this discussion will eventually be part of the WebAssembly gc because WebAssembly gc inevitably is about the foreign interface and the fact that it has to communicate back and forward with a, a foreign environment. So both GCs have to somehow uh, communicate to each other. So I don't know all the details, I don't, uh, but I'm excited about that too. 
But at the same time, the we yeah, already just, in the JS world, there's yeah, already yeah, everything yeah. we need to, yeah, yeah. to tell the WebAssembly world, hey, um, this this can go. Yeah, and I just wanted to raise that flag so that folks know that at least in MicroPython, you know, Damien's like, well, this is interesting. I should probably go look at that. And um, this is a conversation that we'll probably have hopefully in the next two months or so when Damien does you know more work on the WebAssembly yeah. port of MicroPython. Cool. Thanks yeah. for that. Uh, I think Jeff. Uh, has been very, waiting very patiently. Just, I wanted to throw one more note onto the end of the um, the conversation about things that this new uh, automatic proxy management I think will help. I know Chris Lafra and his uh, LTK framework was a big proponent of, I want people to use my Python framework to make apps and I don't want them to have to learn the Pyodide FFI to do it, yeah. which is great. So I'm really excited to see how he, and, and for people who haven't seen, uh, Chris Lafra's LTK Python framework is sort of a declarative um, build web interfaces with Python classes and objects in a really cool way. And it handles a lot of this sort of dynamism under the hood. And so now that you as the end user don't have to use create proxy when you assign an, a, you know, a listener, I think that will be great. I'm also really curious for him and for those who are building apps, I think that's exactly the kind of app that if we're going to find weird edge cases of garbage collection and removing objects from the DOM over and over again, like that'll be a really cool way to test this out. So I'm, I'm excited both ways for that, you, that to evolve. You've made a really good point there, Jeff, because I, I mean, I, I really enjoyed reading uh, uh, Antonio's assess, you know, his kind of with all the graphs and the measurements and things, <laughs> but he was like creating thousands upon thousands upon thousands of patterns of bonkers objects i mean deliberately because he wants to exercise the gc and all of that sort of stuff but i think and and andrea you mentioned but um you know sometimes in the web book people just simply don't care about that they just assume they're never going to run out of <laughs> memory because the devices that we all carry around with us have gigabytes of memory and and you know whatever so i'm i'm really excited to see how um this change and uh the discussion that's going to uh, and unfold around it uh, is going to go because it's a really fascinating, deeply technical yet important for users sort of a subject. So it hits a sort of a really interesting sweet spot there. So let's keep this up. Is is basically what I'm saying. Uh, Andrea, sorry. A quick note that to date, any uh, infinite scrolling page that yeah. has been using a framework or anything. Most likely never cared about this stuff. Yeah, either. yeah, yeah, yeah. And exactly. Yeah. Which is not necessarily good, especially for if you deliver the same experience on mobile. Um, but this the the final the finalization registry and all the weak ref, all these modern standards to deal with this kind of um retained objects that are not needed anymore, not in the pipe, not in the scrolling pipe. Um these these are all this is all stuff that helps to um, mobile, web, but so far, like you said, Nicholas, nobody really cares. So you had already an ID of a post on, on any social, <laughs> that's it, it's there already. You don't, you're don't. likely not going, uh, you're not going to parse it again and do all the things again. So yeah. actually it's the other way around. You probably hooked already some, if some like happens, uh, they update the icon on that post and all the, this kind of stuff. And uh, so, yeah, um, the thing that the, the you mentioned the, the email and Antonio, um, great, great, great um, investigation, because I want to say it, it was really great to see the charts and everything else. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I'm not able right now to share all of that. But basically, the premises was that if, if we create a proxy, the proxy is held by the, the or the proxy is uh, holding the, the element that is using that proxy. And I don't know if internally Payudad is doing that by its own uh, foreign interface. I might assume that might even be the case. So if the proxy exists, the element cannot be freed from memory, but actually on the DOM is the other way around. When you attach a, 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 a listener to an element and the element is gone, the listener is gone too. So there's no, there's not nothing holding the listener anymore. So again, there's no answer in this uh, flag and it's experimental for the for this very same reason. We, we have a lot of unknown unknowns and uh, we, we would like to, uh, to, to tell people especially people experimenting a lot, 
writing demos, quick hacking, can you just maybe next next thing you do, drop any pi.fi around create proxy and, and, and try this flag and, 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 and see how it goes. Or if you're brave enough, just drop, change your previous code, just use the, the experimental flag and tell us if everything is lower, the, the laptop crashed or, or stuff like that. That would be awesome feedback for us. That's it, right? I think we've finished. Um, Talking uh, about yeah, memory yeah. leaks, we've yeah. we've used up our agenda stack, and uh... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We are at the bottom of the agenda. So unless anyone else has anything else to talk about, share or questions, maybe we can call it a day. Okay, I'm going to stop the video in a moment then. So thank you very much, Andrea, for sharing. And thank you very much, Lukash, for taking the notes. Uh, that was a brave man, uh, given that we were about to go into a deeply technical conversation. How you summarize that on the fly? I don't know. Okay. So yeah, the summary just... is awesome, though. The summary yeah, yeah. is great. I, so... 